My name is Dan Freeman or Kenjo, and I welcome you to Kentech 96 TV. For today's lesson, we are going to solve questions with respect to Thevenin's theorem and Norton's theorem. So we want to really compare the differences between Thevenin's theorem and Norton's theorem. So we are going to have one set of questions. Then we will analyze it using Thevenin's theorem. Then once we are done, we will use Norton's theorem to also solve this same question. Then we will compare the results. Okay, so we are supposed to find the current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor in the circuit using Thevenin and Norton's theorem. So this is the 10 ohm resistor. So we are supposed to find the current which is flowing through the 10 ohm resistor using Thevenin and Norton's theorem. So let's begin with the Thevenin's theorem. Now, whenever you want to use Thevenin's theorem, there are specific rules and regulations that you are supposed to follow. And the first one is we are supposed to remove the load resistor and mark the terminals. So here this 10 ohm resistor becomes our load resistor. So we are supposed to remove this load resistor from the circuit and mark the terminals. So removing this load resistor, then we mark the terminals. A, B. Then once we are done with this, we are supposed to find the Thevenin's voltage which is VTH, the voltage which is seen between the terminals. So we are supposed to calculate VTH, which is Thevenin's voltage. So in solving that, we are supposed to use what we call catch-up voltage law. And in using catch-up voltage law, we can introduce what we call loops. So I'll have one loop, two, and three. So now we need to calculate the Thevenin's voltage. And in calculating the Thevenin's voltage, I need to know the current which is flowing through these three ohms resistor. The current flowing through the two ohm resistor and the current also flowing through these two ohm resistor. For loop one, we realize that if you want to use catch up voltage law to simplify loop one, we are going to have seven, which is equal to this voltage source will drive a current, I. This I will flow through resistor. Uh, to, when it gets to this junction, since we are having an open circuit here, this current will flow through this 3 ohm resistor because this side is open, so no current will flow through this side. So we are going to have two, 7 equal to 2i plus 3i. That is for loop 1. Then for loop 2, if we are to take this loop, we are going to have a um, VTH, which is equal to 3I plus 2I1, and that is for loop 2. Then for loop 3, we are going to have 10 ohm, 10 volts equal to, because here, this will drive a current, so let's say the current is I. So we are going to have 10, which is equal to 2I1 plus 2I1. So simplifying these loops, for loop one, we are going to have seven equal to five I, and I will be equal to seven over five. Then for loop three, we are going to have 10 equal to 4i1. And i1 will be equal to 10 over 4. So in calculating for VTH, VTH will be equal to 3i, but i have been calculated already. So 3 into bracket 7 over 5 plus 2i1, and i1 is 10 over 4 into bracket 10 over 4 and this will give us VTH which is the Thevenin equivalent voltage will be equal to 9.2 volts. Then we are supposed to deactivate all the independent sources and calculate for RTH which is the equivalent resistance seen between the two terminals. So in calculating for our RTH we need to deactivate all the independent source and deactivating a, this circuit has an independent source, which is 2, the 10 volts and the 7 volts. So anytime you want to deactivate a voltage source, 
what you need to do is you need to represent it with a short circuit. So you need to deactivate and represent it with a short circuit. You have to now calculate RTH. So calculating for RTH. So for RTH, this two ohm will be in parallel with this two ohm. Then plus this two ohm also be in parallel with this three ohm. So two in parallel with three. Then the results of these two will be in series with this two ohm resistor. And here, if you are to simplify this, we are going to have 4.2 ohm. So our RTH here is equal to 4.2. So now once we've been able to calculate our VTH and RTH, remember, VTH is equal to 9.2. Our RTH is also equal to 4.2, so volts and ohm. Then we are supposed to represent this using Thevenin's equivalent circuit such that our RTH will be in series with the 10 ohm resistor. So this is Thevenin's equivalent circuit. We are going to have the voltage source, which is out VTH 2 volts. Then this is our RTH equal to 4.2. Then in series with our load resistor. Now the load resistor is 10 ohms. So this voltage source will drive a current. And for this current, since these two resistors are connected in series, the same current will flow through them sequentially. So in calculating for the current through this 10 ohm resistor, I will be equal to 9.2 over 4.2 plus 10. I will be equal to 0 0.647 amps, which means that uh, in calculating our current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor, the current which is flowing through the 10 ohm resistor is 0 0.647 Amps. So this is the answer we had using Thevenin's theorem. So let's quickly solve this same question using Norton's theorem to confirm the answer. And you should know that uh, these are various theorems to analyze a circuit. And you should know that any of the theorems that you use, you are supposed to arrive with the same solution. So let's look at uh, the same question using Norton's theorem. So the same question, which is find the current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor in the circuit below using Thevenin and Norton's theorem. So one, uh, we've already solved this question using Thevenin's theorem. So now we want to look at our Norton's theorem. And Norton's theorem, the procedure that we need to follow whenever we are using Norton's theorem is that we are supposed to remove the load resistor and mark the terminal. So we are going to remove this load resistor. And mark the terminals a b now this time around we are not going to represent the term the terminal with an open circuit but rather we are going to represent it with a short circuit so we represent this terminal as a short circuit which is i m which is the northern's current so we need to calculate the current which is flowing through the short circuited part so we are supposed to still use what we call the catch off voltage law. So here, let's say this is 7 volts. It will drive a current, which is I2. Then this is also, sorry, from the question, this is supposed to be 10 volts. Now this 10 volt will also drive a current, let's say I1. Now when this I2 gets to this junction, you are going, the current will split from Kirchhoff's current law. Current leaving the junction should be equal to current entering the junction. So here we are going to have I2 minus IN. Then when IN gets to this junction, 
the current is still going to split so we, let's look at what we, we are going to have so we will have here i n minus i1 and this two ohm resistor i1 will flow through this ohm resistor so let's introduce the loops so loop one two and three three so for loop one you are going to have seven volts equal to two because this voltage source is driving the current i2 so seven volts equal to 2i2 plus 3 into bracket i2 minus i n. If I want to simplify this, I'm going to have 7 equal to 5i2 minus 3i n. And this is going to represent equation 1. For loop 3, so this is loop 1. Let's move to loop 3. So for loop 3, we are going to have 10 volts, which is equal to 2i1 minus 2 into bracket i n minus i1. So 10 into bracket 2i1 minus 2i n plus 2i1. So we are going to have 10 equal to 4i1 minus 2i n, which will give us equation 3 because this is loop 3. So let's move on to the second loop. So for loop 2, we are going to have 0, which is equal to, because there's no voltage source within loop 2. So 0, which is equal to 2 into bracket i n minus i1 plus 2 i n plus minus the minus sign is coming from because there's opposition of flow of current which is negative 3 i2 minus i n so we're simplifying this we are going to have 0 equal to 2 i n minus 2 i1 plus 2i n minus 3i2 plus 3i n and this is going to give 0 equal to 7i n minus 2i1 minus 3i2 so representing our equation 2 so whenever we solve equation 1, 2 and 3 simultaneously we are going to have i n which is equal to 46 over 21. I1 will be equal to 151 over 42. I2 will be equal to 19 over 7. But from this question, what we are interested in is the short circuit current, which is the Norton's current. So the Norton's current will be equal to IN equal to 46 over 21. So now we need to, once we be able to identify our IN, we need to also calculate RN, which is Norton equivalent resistance. And in doing so, we are supposed to deactivate all the independent sources and represent it with a short circuit. Then we calculate our RN. So RN will be equal to this 2 ohm is in parallel with this 2 ohm. So 2 ohm parallel with 2 ohm. Plus this 2 ohm is also in parallel with this 3 ohm. So 2 in parallel with 3. Then the results of this will be in series with this 2 ohm. So if you are able to simplify this, you are supposed to arrive at 4.2. So now, once Rn is equal to 4.2 ohm, then we can represent the values on Norton's equivalent circuit. So it's such that I n, which has been calculated already as 46 over 21. Then we connect our R n in parallel with the load resistor. 
which is also 4.2 ohm. So this is Rn in parallel with the load resistor, which is 10 ohm. So to calculate the current flowing through the load resistor, we can use what we call the current divider rule. So I RL, which is current flowing through the load resistor, is equal to 4.2 over 4.2 plus 10, multiplying I N 46 over 21. And this is going to give us 0.647 amps. Okay, so now we are done using both theories, and we realize that for Thevenis theory, our RTH is the same as our Norton equivalent resistance Rn because both of them we had a value of 4.2 ohm. 4.2 ohm. Then we realized that um, our VTH over our RTH is equal to our IN. So if you want to calculate the Norton current, what you are supposed to do is that you divide your VTH over RTH and it's going to give you your IN. Thank you for watching Kentech 96 TV. Please, if you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe for more updates.